Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now in today's one we are taking a look back at the AMD Radeon RX 550, the 2GB version of the entry level graphics card. Now don't confuse this GPU with the recently released RX 5500 or 5500 XT because this is certainly not that. The RX 550 is a card that was released by AMD in 2017, early 2017, and it was intended for audiences who were looking for something at the budget end of the spectrum. It costs less than £100 or dollars or whatever your chosen currency is, of course. Well, maybe not necessarily. I mean, if you live somewhere where, you know, the exchange rate is one pound to 100,000 of something then it's not going to be under 100 but you 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 get the gist of where I'm going here <laughs> anyway enough rambling because today we are taking a look specifically at the MSI Aero ITX version of the RX 550 one of my favorite versions of the card it's a small card requires no six pin power connector and because of its size it can fit in pretty much any system out there or at least a lot of systems out there and it's ideal even today for PCs that have a pretty weak power supply. Now although it costs less than £100 or dollars or euros brand new these days you can find one for about 50 here in the UK it's not hard to find one for less than £50 I paid 45 this is the 2 gig version of the card there is a 4 gigabyte variant as well but the 2 gig version tends to be a little cheaper and I don't think the performance difference is going to be that significant. In fact, there really may not be that much difference at all when it comes to running those more demanding games. Speaking of which, this was a card that was never intended to do so. Just like the GT 1030, for example, from NVIDIA, it was intended to run eSports titles. But of course, today we're going to put it up against some more demanding AAA games to see how it holds up in 2020. Should you buy one of these? Does it meet your expectations and is it enough for you if you have £50 or dollars to spend on a GPU? Well, why don't we jump into some games and find that out right now? So it seems almost immediately I've been made to eat my words, so to speak. Red Dead Redemption 2 wouldn't quite run at 30fps at 1080p, so we had to lower things to 900p. And in fact, I couldn't turn the texture settings up because of the VRAM limitation. Now, I think you can dive into the INI files, perhaps override this limitation, but there really isn't much point. Um, although, having said that, Adjusting the textures doesn't tend to make that much difference performance wise so I guess you could do that if you like. If you're not into all that, not into messing around with the settings, you jump straight into the game then the highest you can go is low pretty much without exceeding the VRAM limit and at low with 900p you're going to see just above 30 in terms of the average. Now I didn't get anywhere near the town of Valentine here, expect the frame rate to drop if you do so. And most of the time, I saw between 30 and 40. Red Dead Redemption 2 can be a very graphically impressive game, though it's nice to know that it seems like it's fairly well optimised for lower end hardware, at least from what I've seen, because this could be a lot worse, put it that way, and at least it runs on this card. Despite everything looking very muddy and the textures looking rather horrendous, <laughs> Now in Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, I actually kept things at 1080p and used the very low in-game preset. I probably could have bumped things up to either low, maybe even medium, but I found that with the lowest settings here, things ran very nicely and the game was free from hiccups or micro stutters, anything like that. We saw at least 40 FPS on average at full HD resolution, though if you want to get closer to 60, then I'm afraid it's going to need a drop to 900p or even 720p with a GPU like this one. I haven't had much experience with the RX 550, so I wasn't too sure what to expect. I remember checking it out a couple of years ago, I think, when it first came out. I probably compared it to the 1030. It seems to have fallen off the radar a little bit, and people certainly don't talk about it as much as they do the 1030 these days which still remains a pretty popular choice for budget gamers if you'd like to see a comparison in the future between the 550 and the 1030 in 2020 then 
please let me know because I'd be happy to do that. Now the Outer Worlds is a no-go at 1080p, you will experience frequent drops, but 900p with the low settings and the game seem to run fine on this card. There were a few hiccups here and there, but I've noticed that that tends to be something all too common with the Outer Worlds, there's no getting around that. At 900p though, well we are seeing at least a solid 30fps on average, and with a card that cost me £45, well I can't complain too much. Now Metro Exodus crashed first time around at 1080p so we had to lower things to 900p with the low preset in order to see 30 frames per second. However this was rather short lived although the game started off quite well as we made our way into this Caspian level here the frame rate soon dropped to the mid 20s and even when I changed the resolution to 720p well it didn't help and the frame rate hovered around the mid 20s sort of high teens it really wasn't a fantastic experience but metro exodus is a very demanding game and it's the only game i really had significant trouble with today as you can tell i was targeting 30 fps throughout though as i mentioned before anyone looking for 60 fps on a card like this is either going to have to upgrade the card or run at a lower resolution, though bear in mind running at 60fps isn't going to be possible even at 720p in some games. Kingdom Come Deliverance at 1080p with the low settings ran at 30 frames per second at least on average, which was quite a surprising result. Kingdom Come looks great no matter the graphical preset, and I was glad to see it running just fine here. This may vary as you get towards busier towns, but when you're out and about in the countryside, Things are quite good. Now I was probably pushing this card a little bit with Far Cry 5 at 1080p. 900p would certainly have been the way to go here. But with the low preset and a, resol a, resolution, nice. a resolution of 100% scaling. That sentence didn't even make sense. The uh, game stayed. Uh, <laughs> oh, what is happening? Okay, Far Cry 5, 1080p low. 30 FPS on average at least. Decent enough experience. Next. Now Fallout 4 is a slightly older title, but it's one that I very much enjoy going back to play every so often. 1080p with the medium settings granted us at least 30 FPS on average. There will be a few drops here and there. Anyone looking for closer to 60 should once again consider 900 or 720p. But anyone looking for a 1080p experience with 30 FPS plus, well, medium is certainly your best bet. Next up, it's Crisis 3, and this was a fairly surprising result. We actually averaged quite close to 60 at 1080p. I know it's an older game, but it is very graphically impressive even today. So to see close to 60 FPS, well, that was pretty cool. If you wanted 60, or at least 60, then 900p would be better, um, because we are actually running at the lowest settings with anti-aliasing off as well here. So the only thing we can do now is change the resolution. Okay, so in Battlefield 5, I tested out the tank level once again, a pretty demanding level. Battlefield 5 tends to be more CPU intensive, but it also requires a decent graphics card in order to hit those playable frame rates at the ultra settings. These days though, it's not as hard of a task as it was when this game first came out, but at 1080p low, we were seeing at least 30 frames per second with the RX 550. In multiplayer mode, or in any other level that's not in the third person perspective, well, you're probably going to want 720p to try and hit as close to 60 FPS as possible. But even at 1080p here with the low settings, the game looks good. And if you're happy with 30, then it will be a pretty enjoyable experience. And I didn't really notice the frame rate drop below that, which was a little bonus. Now, Assassin's Creed Odyssey at 720p here will have to be played at the lowest settings in order to achieve 30 FPS. We were hovering closer to 40 on average. I played through the opening scene because there is a lot going on on screen here and it's a pretty demanding part of the story. Now, there will be some moments where the frame rate drops closer to 30, but there will also be other moments where it sits closer to 40. So... Overall, it was an okay experience, but you probably aren't going to want to bump the resolution up anymore. Put it that way, Assassin's Creed Odyssey is probably the most demanding of today's games. 
aside from Metro Exodus, of course, which didn't really make a difference as to what resolution we were playing at, whether it be 720p, 900p or 1080p. Anyway, it's nice to know the RX 550 is still capable of gaming. Um, you know, we've chosen a few games here that have been released in different years. They're all up to date. The drivers are all up to date. The RX 550 still supports the latest drivers. So that's good to know. And you'll still have a pretty decent experience if you are satisfied with 30 frames per second and you don't mind turning the resolution down in some instances. A handful of games, though, are probably going to give you a lot more issues than you'd like, to say the least. But there we have it. This has been a look back at the RX 550. I do hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, you know what to do. Smash that like. <laughs> Just gently tap that like button. Gently click that like button. Leave a dislike if you didn't enjoy this video. Hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more content similar to this one or you haven't done so already and you think I'm worth a subscription. And uh, hopefully I'll see all of you in the next 